Good morning, everybody. Mr. Bissinger here. We're going to be reading a graphic biography today about an explorer named Matthew Henson, who's an Arctic adventurer. Chapter One, Young Adventurer. In 1878, 12-year-old Matthew Henson was on his own. He lived and worked at a restaurant in Washington, D.C., that fall, he grew bored of cooking and washing dishes, so he walked 40 miles to the shipping docks in Baltimore, Maryland. There, he approached a gruff old captain in hopes of finding more adventurous work. Sir, is this your ship? Yes, she is, son. Do you need a cabin, boy, sir? I'd like to go to sea with you. What do you think your folks would say about going to sea on the Katie Hines? My mother and father are dead. All right, come on aboard, son. In the late 1800s, African Americans had few rights and few good paying jobs. Captain Childs knew that this tired young man would never have a chance at a better life if he didn't help. Henson quickly learned that life aboard a ship wasn't filled with adventure. Better wash them pots faster, boy. When Henson wasn't working, Captain Childs kept him busy with other tasks. I'm going to teach you how to read every last one of these. Childs taught Henson about history, geography, and navigation. But there was one lesson that Henson learned on his own. Get out of my way. I ain't never liked you. One sailor started a fight with young Henson, only because he was black. In 1883, Captain Childs died. I've been at sea for five years. Without Captain Childs, it's time to move on. Now 17, Henson searched for a new job. He soon learned that his experiences and skills wouldn't help him find a good job. He was hired only for difficult, low-paying jobs. Henson loaded, Henson loaded heavy crates onto ships in Boston, Massachusetts. In Providence, Rhode Island, he worked as a bellhop at a hotel. He had a backbreaking job digging dishes in Buffalo, New York. Henson moved back to Washington, D.C. when he was 21. He got a job at a hat and fur store. Matt, bring a size 7 and 3 8 sun helmet. Can I help you with anything else, Mr. Perry? I'm leaving for Central America soon and need to hire a valet. Lieutenant Robert Perry worked as an engineer with the U.S. Navy. He had been assigned survey work in Central America. Maybe Matt would like... Sir, I'd like a job very much. A few months later, Henson sailed to Nicaragua with Perry. Besides taking care of Perry's personal needs, Henson helped build Perry's headquarters. Matt... You're a good carpenter. What else can you do? I've studied navigation and geography. Maybe I could help on one of your survey crews. Hold that chain steady, Henson. These bugs are eating me alive, but this is better than washing Perry's clothes. Chapter 2. Perry's Dream In 1888, Henson and Perry returned to the United States. Perry worked at the League Island Navy Yard in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He got Henson a job there as a messenger. One day, Perry called Henson into his office. I'm going to explore the Arctic. I'd like you to come along. But what is there for me to do? I'm not a scientist. Build sledges, hunt, drive a dog team, make cook stoves, sledge supplies through torrents of ice and snow. Sounds like a great adventure. Temperatures in the Arctic reached minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. People often lost toes and fingers to frostbite. Some people thought an African American could not handle the cold weather. Some people said, You're a Negro boy, you don't belong in cold climate. I'd be sure to dress warm, Lieutenant Skeptic. If you come back without any fingers or toes frozen off, I'll pay you $100. In 1891, Henson sailed with Perry and a small crew to Greenland. Henson built sledges for falling, hauling supplies over ice and snow. Nails became brittle and break into this arctic weather. You'd have to use walrus hide to hold the sledge together. In 1891, Henson sailed with Perry and a small crew to Greenland. Henson built sledges for hauling supplies over ice and snow. Shortly after their arrival, Inuit family visited Perry's camp. Everyone was surprised at the Inuit's reaction to Henson. The Inuit thought Henson was a lost member of their people because of his dark skin. During this trip, the Inuit taught Henson and Perry important skills. The Inuit taught them how to build igloos, 
how to hunt musk, ox, and polar bear, and how to drive a sledge. Earlier, Arctic explorers thought Inuit, like African Americans, were inferior to whites. Henson treated them as equals and befriended them. The Arctic's harsh weather, weather and icy terrain have killed many explorers. They didn't earn the trust of the Inuit. I want to be the first person to stand on top of the world. The Inuit can help us there. With their help, the world shall discover the pole. In 1892, Henson and the rest of Perry's party returned to the United States. Shortly afterwards, Henson saw Lieutenant Skraptik. You see all my fingers are all here? I never thought you had a winning chance. Between 1893 and 1906, Henson and Perry returned to the Arctic five times. Each time they failed to reach the North Pole. Henson had to find work between trips. One job he found was a porter for the New York Central Railroad. Henson enjoyed the job. It allowed him to see different parts of the United States. But he experienced some racism in many places. Chapter 3. The North Pole Perry had a ship, the Roosevelt, built for his arctic trips the ship's powerful engines and sturdy hull allowed it to cut through icy waters in 1908 henson aged 42 left with perry for another try to reach the north pole they stopped at the inuit village of Ata, greenland they traded for furs and sled dogs they also hired inuit to help them on their trip the inuit uh, called henson male pulak which meant matthew the king of one or big matthew the Roosevelt fought its way past huge icebergs and through icy waterways. In September, it reached Ellesmere Island off the northwestern coast of Greenland. There, it became locked in ice. Henson began sledding supplies to Cape Columbia, the northernmost point of Ellesmere Island. The group set up a camp of igloos there and called it Crane City. Arctic winters have little daylight. Perry's party didn't want to turn didn't want to travel in darkness all the time, so they waited at Crane City until spring. During winter's long, dark hours, Henson built sledges and prepared supplies. Ota helped Henson build, hunt musk ox. On March 1, 1909, the 413-mile trek from Crane City to the North Pole began. Perry set up a relay system for the trip. Captain Robert Bartlett's group cut a trail over the Arctic Ocean's icy terrain. Henson followed him a day later with a supporting group. Ice covering the Arctic Ocean wasn't smooth. Ocean currents moved the ice. Large sheets of ice smashed together to create towering pressure ridges. Other times, the ice broke apart as it shifted, causing leads. Perry named one of the stretch of open water the Big Lead. The Big Lead scared the Inuit. They thought it was caused by the devil who wanted to swallow them in the ice. After a six-day wait, the ice finally froze thick enough for them to cross. After one month, Henson and Perry were about 150 miles from the North Pole. After Bartlett headed back, Henson was in charge of the lead group. He, Ota, and Sigalu used pickaxes to make a trail over the rough ice. On April 5th, they were only 35 miles from the North Pole. As Henson made his way over the ice... Luckily, he almost fell. Luckily, Ota was right behind him. Henson, Ota, and Sigalu traveled until midnight that day. They built igloos and waited for Perry, Enua, and Oatu to meet them. The next day, Perry took out his navigational equipment. By measuring where the sun was in the sky, he could determine how far north they were. The North Pole, at last... After reaching their goal, Henson, Perry, and the Inuit still had a hard journey home. They celebrated by resting for a day. Then they headed back to Cape Columbia, reaching land two weeks later. After returning to the United States, Perry received many awards. Henson received little recognition. During the years following his trip to the North Pole, Henson struggled to find a good job. He wrote to Perry several times, but Perry did not help him. Their worlds were once again divided into white and black. In 1913, Henson found work parking cars in Brooklyn, New York. One day, politician Charles Anderson saw him. Anderson and other African-American leaders helped get Henson a government job. In 1913, Henson became a clerk for the U.S. Customs Bureau in New York City. He worked there until his retirement in 1937. 
African-American leaders also worked to give Henson the recognition he deserves. In 1937, he was invited to join the Explorers Club. He became the club's first African-American member. In 1947, Henson received a silver medal from the U.S. Navy. Matthew Henson's life was filled with hardships. At an early age, he lost his parents. He was judged by the color of his skin instead of his abilities. And even after braving the dangers of the Arctic, few people recognized him for his accomplishments. On March 9, 1955, Henson died at age 88. He was buried in a small cemetery in Maryland. About 30 years after his death, Henson's body was moved to Arlington National Cemetery. Many American heroes, including Perry, are buried there. Today, Henson receives equal recognition. He is considered the co-discoverer of the North Pole. Hope you enjoyed the story. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.